How's it going, everyone? Um, now I'm the first negative uh, reputation. Um, I'll be talking about a few of the things that my uh, opponent had brought up, as well as my um, teammate here. Um, first, I was going to bring up the whole thing about autonomy that um, Bookman had brought up earlier, and he had brought up the whole thing about Brittany and Brittany moving to Oregon. And he even claimed that uh, Brittany died a peaceful death. Now his, um, his teammate there, he asserted in, a, in his speech that, uh, he, he asserted that when you have to move to another state, you have to have a change of address, you have to change your voting card is what he said. And that um, you have to go through this whole long process that takes forever, except for he didn't source any of it. And if Brittany moved to Oregon and she was able to take care of PA, as why doesn't everyone else do this? It doesn't seem like it's a long waiting time. It seemed like it worked for her. Um, I would also like to bring up that uh, that that was the whole thing on the inherency. You know, it's not it's not an issue. You guys can you can move a person that wants to commit PAS if it's that important to them, they can move to a state and have it done peacefully. Um, <clears throat> I would like to uh, add on to the the whole thing about the autonomy. You know, they, they suggest that my, my advo the advocates here suggest that PAS um, allows a person autonomy, and like you heard my teammate bring up that that, that is false. I would like to add on to that. Um, that this happened in Oregon. Uh, and it shows that PAS, physician assisted suicide, is actually directly influenced by money. Um, Dan writes in an article, Oregon often offers terminal Ill patients, terminally ill patients, patients, doctor assisted suicide instead of Medicare. This was something that was on Fox News in 2008. Some terminally ill patients in Oregon who turned to their state for health care were denied treatment and offered doctor assisted suicide instead. A, pro a proposal some experts have called a chilling corruption of medical ethics. These are people that didn't want PAS, and when they went to go the government to get health care um, and get the finances that they need, they were denied it, only being told that the government would pay for them to die. And that was the whole thing that I was talking about with the Netherlands and how it relates in their government and how it's worked there from PAS to euthanasia. Um, <clears throat> Also, to add on to that with the, the cost thing, um, just to let you know about the, the whole thing with uh, the PAS and how it's motiv uh, motivated by the financial interest, um, Jane St. Clair, also on 30 logical reasons against assisted suicide, about one third of Medicare's budget goes for costs incurred in the last one year of life. And 40% of that goes for expenses in the last one month of life. If we convince you that you have no hope for a future, we save money on your care and, t and, make, your money and make money on your organs. If we convince you to die early, we inherit your money more quickly. And then also onto uh, the palliative care that the, the advocate brought up. And uh, I would like to bring up the... Um, According to ProCon.org, the top 10 pros and cons, uh, this was in 2013, the widespread availability of euthanasia in the Netherlands may be another reason for the stunted growth of the Dutch hospice movement. As one Dutch doctor is reported to having said, why should I worry about palli palliation when I have euthanasia, saying that we don't need to take care of our uh, people that are terminally ill anymore, we'll just kill them. Thank you guys.